Sometimes urban infrastructure turns wild animals into, how can I put this mildly? Basically, it makes them really stupid. Some try to gnaw through concrete to find something, others mate with dummies, and some even Today, we'll show you what happens to animals in urban environments and why it's bad for their brains. Yes, this is exactly what it looks like. The squirrel is trapped in the wall, so it's not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. At first, the squirrel called the forest its home. However, as people came into the picture and transformed the forest into a bustling city, the squirrels adapted to urban life. Did this switch work out for them? It's kind of hard to say. Look, there are no nuts here. Stop gnawing on the building, you rodent. Go away. Living in the city certainly has its perks. Free food, plus you can find some pretty good shelters in human houses. They're even heated. The only problem is that sometimes squirrels get overconfident. In this video, the squirrel tried to get through the wall and got stuck. All we know is that after the camera was turned off, the squirrel was still able to get out. What did it want there in the first place? Well, maybe it smelled like food inside. And that's not the only story like this. Here, a baby squirrel was pulled out of a manhole in Munich, Germany. If it hadn't been for people, it probably would have died. According to witnesses, its huge behind made it impossible for it to fit through the gap. And this squirrel was rescued in England after getting stuck in a bird feeder. This poor thing even had to be smeared with butter to get it out through a hole in a garbage can in Boston. Squirrels are ubiquitous. Everywhere, they get in trouble because of their curiosity and overconfidence. Occasionally, their issues can be quite sensitive in nature. But why do squirrels act this way? It's like they sort of became dumber and don't realize that some holes are just too small to fit in. Well, part of the problem, as always, is humans. First of all, urban squirrels are often fatter than forest squirrels. They're fed by people, which means that the risk of getting stuck is higher for such animals simply due to their size. Secondly, the city provides a lot of possible food sources. Garbage bins, feeders, boxes, cans. Squirrels know that food can be found anywhere. And since they know it, they'll explore every corner and end up getting stuck in the most unlikely places. Since squirrels are small animals with fast metabolism, they need to eat all the time. Out in the wild, this problem simply doesn't exist because there's nowhere for them to get stuck. Squirrels live in trees, moving from one to another, munch on natural food, and most likely have no clue about the challenges their city-dwelling relatives have to deal with. Can we really label urban squirrels as dumb? It's essential to consider one crucial factor. Like humans, an animal's intelligence is influenced by its personality. Squirrels can be brave, smart, not so bright, shy, aggressive, or curious, and these traits shape their lives. Moreover, the way animals, including squirrels, behave is influenced by the humans they interact with. A recent study showed that Japanese squirrels in areas with the largest number of people were not as good at solving puzzles for which they were rewarded with food as squirrels from areas with fewer people. In general, scientists are pretty sure that animals don't really act silly. Actually, their behavior is closely linked to the environment they're in. Adapting to city life can be quite a challenge. Take these deer, for example. I don't think a video like this needs any commentary. A resident from Wisconsin captured a hilarious video featuring a confused deer attempting to mate with wooden lawn ornaments. Believe it or not, you can find similar clips like this anywhere where there are deer. And guess what? Moose are joining the party too. But why? I mean, can't they see the difference between a real female of their species and a statue? The thing is, during the mating season, deer, well, just say it, they go crazy. The white-tailed deer's mating season, also known as the rut, lasts for about three weeks. The catch is that female deer are only ready to mate for around 72 hours, and that leaves male deer on a super tight schedule. Since each female's mating readiness period follows a different schedule, the males are constantly on the move, covering long distances to find potential mates. With only 72 hours per female and three weeks in total, these deer don't have the luxury of checking if the deer in front of them is real or just a statue. They just go for it, mate, and then quickly move on, on the lookout for the next opportunity. Some researchers even claim that males are so busy during the mating season that they don't even have time for food. However, most scientists would argue with that. 
Deer do eat just a little less than usual, which can cause them to lose about 20 to 25% of their body weight during the mating season. That's 29 to 40 pounds. Testosterone is also a factor which makes them more assertive and active and bold. Bold enough to get on a wooden statue for some romance. This fawn believes it's well hidden and thinks no one can spot it. However, there's a catch. He's just lying in the middle of the road. And this isn't the only time it's happened. You see, there's another fawn and it decided to lie in the most unsuitable place. From year to year when it gets warmer, the authorities ask the people not to touch the fawns even if their mom is not around. White-tailed deer fawns usually arrive in May and June and every year people make countless calls about abandoned fawns due to this. However, this is hardly ever the actual situation. After a mother deer gives birth, the fawn is unable to follow her for the next five to seven days. During this time, it's normal for the fawn to lie in a curled up and frozen position on the ground, concealed in the grass or sparse shrubs. However, it's this natural behavior that leads to potential problems. Deer are often found near cities and other populated areas, and sometimes their behavior can be, well, odd. <laughs> they try to hide as nature tells them to, but the unnatural surroundings throw them off. For instance, a red fawn on a gray pavement road stands out like a huge bright spot that's really hard to miss. In a good scenario, it's just a pedestrian road, but sometimes fawns even lie down on the roadway, which is a perfect example of survival instinct seemingly doing everything to prevent your survival. Out in the wild with no roads around, there are plenty of perfect hiding spots. The fawn doesn't have the ability to see itself from an outsider's perspective and understand how unseen it is by others, so it just goes with its instincts and ends up with whatever it ends up with. Even pigeons seem to have problems with living close to people. Imagine you want to feed a bird and it just throws the food away. Just look at it. It's like it doesn't have a single thought in its head. This one somehow got its beak stuck. I can hear evolution shaking its head in disbelief. How can someone be that stupid? Well, it happens. Yeah, here's pigeons getting sucked into the grain, and they do nothing to avoid it. They don't even seem to realize what exactly is going on. Of course, it's not always that pigeons are simply stupid. As with other animals, we sometimes don't know or understand everything that's going on with them. We've mentioned before how pigeons build these absurd nests, which isn't really a sign of stupidity, but just a reflection of their natural behavior. Pigeons used to nest on rocks, so they never bothered making proper nests, so why start now? It's surprising how much quirky behavior you can observe in these birds. At first glance, it's tough to believe that pigeons might be smarter than they look. Of course, they aren't nearly as clever as crows and magpies. But researchers and experts disagree with the notion that pigeons are downright stupid. Previous studies of pigeon behavior have suggested that their intelligence may well be at the level of a three-year-old kid. And a study by Edward Wasserman in which pigeons were subjected to various intelligence tests has shown that pigeons can be smarter than cats. That's really hard to believe. In another study, it was found that pigeons have the ability to remember people's faces, associate them with food, and they even remember them for good. This video shows a pigeon solving a box and banana problem. It took about a minute to realize, to get the food, it has to set the box up and climb on top of it. But then why does it seem that pigeons are just excessively stupid? Perhaps there are just too many of them and they live right next to people. It's easy to film stupid behavior, it can be done by almost any person with a smartphone. So it turns out that we're the ones who create this reputation for pigeons. Although if you think about it, all animals on this planet do some nonsense from time to time. The difference is that we're not around to film it. Yet here we are saying that animals are kind of dumb, funny, do weird things. I think there are people who are much dumber than animals. You done? Yeah. Then let's get on with it. Bovines in the wild are a symbol of freedom. They have huge, scary-looking horns. Yes, I know these are highland cattle. Don't mind them, they're just to illustrate the point. So, scary horns feared by all predators and even other herbivores. And here are the domesticated cows. They're like, I'm stuck in my own feeder because another cow pushed me. Help! Actually, almost any feeder, regardless of its design, can become an unexpected trap for a cow. Feeders are needed because cows like to pull hay out of the bale and then eat it off the ground, but it gets dirty quickly and then they lose interest in it. 
Yeah, they first get it dirty and then refuse to eat it. The bars don't let them pull out the hay and the cows have to eat it from the bale. Occasionally, however, their heads or horns get caught on the feeders and then the cows get stuck. The bad news, this happens quite often. The good news, cows are massive enough animals to just pick up the feeder and carry it away with them, like nothing happened. Even without bars, the feeder can still be a hazard. The cow may fall in there sideways or backwards like in the video, but its legs are too high up to get out, so it'd feel kind of like a turtle, I guess. There's even an urban legend that says if you sneak up on a cow and push it over, it won't be able to get up, just like the one that fell into the feeder. Despite all attempts, the animal never managed to get up, and the other cows weren't of any help. They just came to take a look at the ridiculous situation. Except for the cow that pushed the poor creature. Maybe it's just a fan of the activity called cow tipping. Sounds ridiculous, but it's an urban legend, remember? So according to this legend, people used to do it for fun because there was nothing to do in the countryside. It's a stereotype, of course. Tipping cows seems to have its origins in the 1970s, but the idea of animals being unable to stand up after falling down dates back to the time of the Roman Empire. Nowadays, there are even entire diagrams showing where and at what angle you should apply pressure to tip a cow. Except that cows usually lie down and get on their feet easily, unless they're sick or injured. There have even been scientific studies to determine the theoretical possibility of tipping cows over. Yes, that's what scientists do too. And although the results are different, scientists agree on one thing. Cows are large animals that are hard to surprise. And they cannot fall if pushed by a human. It's estimated that it takes a force of 3,000 to 4,000 newtons, which would require at least four people. Well, or one single cow, as in our case. It has, without realizing it, become part of an urban legend. Quite a popular one, actually. Even the Cars movie has a reference to that. <laughs> So in the wild, cows simply don't have that problem. Even if one cow pushes another, the second one can easily get up, and there are no feeders in the wild where the heads would get stuck. It's the man-made structures causing the trouble again. One day, a farmer's family in suburban Sacramento was awakened in the night by a strange noise. When they came outside, they saw... It turns out that such cases are quite common. Rams often headbutt walls, trees, fences, and anything else they can reach. One of the possible reasons is plain boredom. Either the ram is kept alone or the sheep it lives with don't pay attention to it. But sometimes this happens to rams that have spent too much time with people. If there's less socializing, the animal gets bored, feels lonely, and headbutts the walls. What else is there to do? Another theory says that headbutting stuff is a natural behavior for the ram, or peculiarities of the character of a particular individual. Because, yes, even a ram can have a personality. A third reason is establishing dominance. In the wild, rams fight each other to see who's the strongest. When there are no other rams nearby, they'll have to figure something out. A wall, a tree, that'll do. Finally, a worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary! And this is actually the most unsafe thing to do. In the wild, rams act like this because this behavior allows them to get more females to successfully procreate. Domesticated rams, on the other hand, seem to take health risks for nothing. They just have nothing better to do. And you know, at the end of the day, there's a reasonable question. Do all animals get dumber when they're around humans? Steve and I looked up some information on this, and it seems that, to some degree, humans do affect the intelligence of animals. Pets have human caretakers, so they don't have to stress about predators or hunting for food. In these conditions, their brains don't need to be big, and over time, they actually get smaller. Scientists found evidence for this when they compared wild and domesticated minks. But now think about urban animals. They still have to scavenge for food and watch out not to end up as someone else's snack. The study found that urban foxes have developed a smaller brain and a shorter, more powerful snout over time, which can help them rummage through trash and chew it up if they have to. Catching prey with a snout like that's hard, but urban foxes don't need it. There's enough food around that they don't have to chase. The researchers also found that urban foxes had smaller brains, so they were probably less cunning. In the wild, foxes have to roam over long distances in their search for food, and they need to remember their routes. 
On the other hand, urban foxes can simply chill around a couple of trash cans where people throw away food. They don't need to put much effort into thinking or remembering paths. And this kind of thing seems to be true for other urban animals. Of course, the sharks in Florida aren't your typical city sharks, but they've had their fair share of human encounters that didn't do them any good. Witnesses began noticing some bizarre shark behavior, swimming around invisible objects, approaching people even though they typically avoided them and the like. The reason behind this odd behavior came to light when it was discovered that the sharks were consuming illegal substances dumped into the ocean by criminals. No wonder it had such a wild impact on their behavior. The Berlin Lioness Fiasco In Berlin, there was a huge police operation recently where they spotted what they thought was a lioness roaming the streets of the capital city. It turned into a wild scene with tanks, armored cars, and snipers armed with tranquilizer darts. Just imagine this scene. But guess what? After a crazy 30-hour search, the experts checked the video footage and found out it wasn't a lioness after all. It was just a wild boar. Sea otter still on the loose. Remember we told you about the aggressive sea otter that was stealing people's surfboards? Well, it hasn't been caught yet. Moreover, the animal has a growing fan club, with people coming every day to see the otter sunbathing on the rocky shore, diving into the water, and eating crabs. But constant attempts to catch make the otter wary. Plus, bad weather is also a factor, so the culprit is still at large. I've joined the fan club too. See you later.